Soldiers of the Russian armed forces refuse to go to the so-called meat assaults in the Kursk region. There are cases of refusal to carry out orders and desertion. This was reported by the Russian Z resource Northern Channel, which is associated with the North Group of Russian Armed Forces. He reported serious problems with motivation in the ranks of the Marines of the 155th Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces. This unit took part in the failed offensive of the Russian Armed Forces on the northwestern flank of the Kursk direction. It is known that part of the group was surrounded by the Ukrainian Defense Forces. The personnel of the assault groups, not wanting to participate in active offensive operations, distort data on their medical losses, misleading the command. Severny Kanal reported, according to him, the 11th Airborne Assault Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces has similar problems. This unit is located near the village of Ruskoy Poreti, north of the city of Sudza. The morale and psychological state of the Russian troops there is also at a low level. There are cases of desertion, the channel clarified. According to him, North Korean soldiers may soon be sent to help the 11th Brigade. There are already rumors that these very Buryats will soon be replaced by so-called new or special Buryats, wrote Z Channel. Recently, footage filmed in the village of Sverdlikovo in the Kursk region has appeared on social networks. The village has suffered heavy damage, many houses have been completely destroyed, and the landscape looks like smoking ashes. It is noteworthy that the Ukrainian army entered there in August without a fight and the village was completely intact. However, the Russian army trying to liberate the region is raising it to the ground, not taking into account the fact that the infrastructure and houses belong to Russian citizens. Now in place of Sverdlikovo, there is a pile of ruins. SVO is going according to plan. Putin has done a great job of ensuring Russia's security. Comments on the footage on the internet. Users emphasize that the Russian occupation army is fighting Ukraine in exactly the same way, raising cities and residential areas to the ground in order to advance. Sverdlikovo is located near the border with Ukraine, northwest of Sudza. As the fighting continues, the region is gradually beginning to resemble Ukraine's Donbass, where the fiercest fighting is taking place. The U.S. military trained him in explosives and battlefield tactics. Now the Army veteran and enlisted National Guard member was calling for taking up arms against police and government officials in his own country. Chris Arthur, who served two tours in Iraq before joining the North Carolina National Guard, warned about a coming civil war. Videos he posted publicly on YouTube bore titles such as, The End of America or The Next Revolutionary War. In his telling, the U.S. was falling into chaos and there would be only one way to survive, kill or be killed. He left the National Guard in 2019 to focus full-time on Tackleberry Solutions, his military tactics business where he sold access to this deadly expertise. Arthur was posting during a surge of far-right extremism in the years leading up to the January 6 attack on the U.S. Capitol. He wrote Warcraft training manuals to help others organize their own militias. And he offered sessions at his farm in Mount Olive, North Carolina, that taught how to kidnap and attack public officials, use snipers and explosives and design a fatal funnel booby trap to inflict mass casualties. While he continued to post publicly, military and law enforcement ignored more than a dozen warnings phoned in by Arthur's wife's ex-husband about Arthur's increasingly violent rhetoric and calls for the murder of police officers. This failure by the Guard, FBI, and others to act allowed Arthur to continue to manufacture and store explosives around young children and train another extremist who would attack police officers in New York State and lead them on a wild, two-hour chase and gun battle. Arthur isn't an anomaly. He is among more than 480 people with a military background accused of ideologically driven, extremist crimes from 2017 through 2023, including the more than 230 arrested in connection with the January 6 insurrection. When I came home, I realized that I no longer knew who the good guys were and who the bad guys were. And I realized that we were that much closer to where we were going to be an inevitable war. Start.
Is this something that you want to have for, say, a small LR militia? Yes, absolutely. Take the bad guy out through a snatch and grab, hold him accountable, have him publicly tried, and then have him executed. The big key characteristic of plots with folks with military backgrounds is they tend to veer towards the extreme violence end of the spectrum. So what we have found is that this is primarily a problem in the veteran community, not the active service community. My thumb is pointing and I'm just punching out and I'm engaging. The internet really is the marketplace where these ideas are exchanged. Blessed be Yahweh El Shaddai. My soul is magnified, the Yahweh of hosts. I got the impression that he was really concerned about the future of our country, but his focus was China and Russia. My husband took one look at him and was like, look, you're not a soldier. I can't teach you to do any of that stuff that you're... I can teach you how to unite your community if China and Russia come. I can show you, like, if you've got a war going on, I can show you how to unite your community and keep people alive. Can you advise all units to use caution? Oh, shots are fired. 